Also yesterday, though, a lot of people, I'd, I'd like to know, I'd really like to know from the group, I don't know how much Sabin coverage you guys consumed yesterday, but if anyone ended up on the other side of this, because I believe Nick Saban making as much money as he did in that sport and then coming out against the idea of the sport can't be about money the moment I lose control of the money and everyone can get the money. But when Nick Saban says what I'm about to play here, I want to ask you guys if you heard anyone supporting Nick Saban, any media members, when I think about the disconnect about what college fans might want in terms of freedom in this realm, whether they'd want Nick Saban in charge, and if the media just goes the other way, which I'm going to go as well, where I just point out the hypocrisy again and again of how much money this man made off of the backs of these kids. All the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday uh, with their parents for breakfast, and uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their um, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me, you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? So, you know, to me, that was sort of a red alert that <laughs> we really are creating a circumstance here that is not beneficial to the development of young people, which is why I always did what I did. Um, my dad did it. I did it. Um, so... And that's the reason that I always like college athletics more than the NFL is because yeah. you had the opportunity <laughs> to develop young people. So, and I, I want their quality of life to be good. I think, as I said before, name, image, and likeness is a great opportunity for them to create a brand for themselves. Um, I'm not against that at all. Um, but to come up with some kind of a system uh, that still can help the development of young people, I think, is paramount to the future of college athletics. Way to throw Miss Terry under the yeah. bus there. Yeah. Great tan, though. I mean. Well, he's probably been playing golf every day for the last two months. I, I mean, uh, you were howling with laughter. I'm assuming that's what the media's response is. The uh, I'm, I don't think I've been talking for a while about the idea of just greed, resplendent, unwavering greed, not just in sports, but everywhere. Everywhere on the globe has been a rotting contaminant. But when it gets to the kids is when it's a problem. When it gets to college kids want to be paid for it, then all of a sudden Nick Saban is next to Ted Cruz, is, and, he's, and he's comfortable going sort of the Tuberville, Tuberville, Tuberville route mm -hmm. of what can I do in my region of the country to get the people who I'm surrounded by who believe the college kids should be kept down because it gets in the way of the greater good of Alabama being the best. But he's not against NIL. The, well, this isn't the first time that he's <laughs> said this. Remember when him and Jimbo Fisher <laughs> got into it two summers ago and he was like, Texas A&M is buying all their players and Jimbo Fisher got really upset and bristled at that. Like this has been, I think, his viewpoint for a while. And, and I would say probably a lot of people, I can't speak for the media reaction as a whole, but I think a lot of people do think that there needs to be some regulation and restriction to NIL. The problem has always been how do you do that and how do you put a cap on athlete compensation for their name image and likeness and who regulates that and what is that when the coaches have un unfettered access to wealth and riches for coaching in the sport that's always been the issue what were you laughing at i mean oh so many things first of all he was acting his ass off with his voice breaking there like oh, the kids and oh so that that made me laugh but then i looked at ted cruz staring gazing at him lovingly and i just thought how big is Ted Cruz's boner right now? Like, let's not play these black kids. Let's keep them <laughs> broke for life or whatever. And then the final, the coup de grace, like, that's why I like college football more than the NFL. Because I couldn't tell them, them naysayers what to do. They were getting paid. <laughs> these ones over here, I could tell them everything. I was like, come on, man. That whole thing was just hilarity. It's, it was, it, I, midway through it, I tried to imagine if this were like 1866. 
And this is like a former plantation uh, owner. Like the we should have put him in a powdered wig. No, uh, no. Nick Saban should have been wearing a powdered wig. The Colonel Sanders suit. He should have been dressed like Don Johnson and Django, talking about like <laughs> I just can't. I can't tell them what to do now. They, they, all they care about is getting paid. No, Sherlock, you got paid for fifty years. Well, also, <laughs> and you've been paying them players, for ten years. Players <laughs> went to Alabama so they could get paid in the NFL. So it's not like they didn't care about money beforehand. Plus, obviously, players were getting paid in a less, even less regulated way. And he also went on to talk about parity and like this will make the rich richer and the poor poorer. Like, I, I don't even, I don't even know how to begin to unpack that when you've been the head coach at Alabama for like twenty years. Well, I'm Is about to. You are the uh, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this for you right now. I'm going to unpack it for oh. you with the details that you might want on this. That's very nice of you. I'm, I have right. them all in front of me here because. Mm. Uh, so here are some facts for you on Nick Saban. Okay, hold on, and hold look on, this. Hold on. High heat synopsis. Ray and Anna, husband and wife, own and operate a restaurant together on their opening night. Both of them are keeping secrets, however. Ray is in debt to the mafia, and Anna is an ex KGB agent. Right. Both what? secrets are revealed when the mafia sends people to kill Ray, but Anna fights them off. Ray and Anna must work together to save their restaurant and their lives. <laughs> How'd I miss it? I mean, seriously. Sounds like Frozen 3. What year was this? 2022. What? 2022. Oh, I thought I you were going to say this. 1987. And Liam Neeson's not in this? No. <laughs> There's been a big movement in Hollywood lately to have like the the woman lead role be like secret agent or former secret agent that then goes in and saves the world. It's called inclusiveness, I think. That's I don't think inclusion. Is it? I don't think it's Is that. It? Well said. Is it? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> to say that confidently, that poorly, is the Amin experience first hour when he's just off the flight and he's tired. This happens every time he lands. He thinks he's just going to get on the treadmill at 100 miles an hour, and he's just a little slow and whispering, and then he gets mad at me for pointing it out. These numbers, though, Stugatz, on Nick Saban, mm -hmm. because maybe none of these are surprising to you. This is just what's known. I would like for you guys to look up for me. Uh, what the second highest paid employee, state employee in Alabama has been over the last 20 years, because he made $124 million in contracts at just Alabama, and Stugatz was probably underpaid. Yep. He had a country club membership paid for by the university, so that's taxpayers. He's got two full-sized cars for business and personal use, and no one knows whether those were part of the Ferrari collection he would show to recruits, but he would show a Ferrari collection to recruits. I don't, uh, I don't imagine Nick Saban uh, it, with Ferraris, but maybe, that, maybe you did. Uh, he has 24 hours a year on non-commercial airlines, so anytime he wants a private plane, basically, he can do it. His salary the last season was $11.4 million, and I'm guessing there's no college coach who made more in endorsements. It's estimated... At five million dollars, he'd get seventy-five grand for appearing in the SEC championship game. One hundred twenty-five grand if he won it. He'd get sixty-five grand for appearing in any bowl game, any bowl game at all. Hmm. Uh, he bought a mansion recently on Juniper Island for seventeen point five million dollars. Uh, the five million dollars in endorsements is a guess, but it's got to be more than any other college coach of any kind. And in two thousand and thirteen. Ten years ago, and we don't know how many more of these arrangements there are, right? Because guys like this get paid two hundred thousand dollars for showing up and making a corporate speech, just talking, just shaking hands with your CEO for thirty minutes. He gets a quarter million dollars at least. The Crimson Tide Foundation was started, a private foundation set up to help fund athletics at Alabama. They spent three point one million dollars to just buy Saban's four bedroom, four and a half bathroom home and he continued to live in it. So they just bought his house as well. <laughs> and there, nobody had this deal. And then there's this one. This one's good, too. And, by the way, deserved, earned for the CEO of this business. His contract called for him at the University of my, uh, Alabama to meet each February to calculate the average salaries of both the three highest-paid head coaches in the SEC and the five highest-paid coaches nationally. If Saban's total salary was lower than either of those two averages, his pay would rise to match the higher one. So uh, inflation was not going to like cause Nick Saban to ever be like Jared Goff was, where he was the highest-paid. No, Nick Saban's always the highest-paid according to whatever you're paying people people 
at that rate. Like, what's the what's the other argument on the other side of this? And that's why I like college more than the NFL. Mah- Mahomes should take notes from that. Instead of cutting salary? No, I'm just saying, like, he should be doing that for all the quarterbacks in the league with the Chiefs. <laughs> but but this and, – and then he leaves and Steve Sar- Scar- uh, Sarkeesian gets the same sort of deal at Texas. Well, he had, was- he had leverage. I mean – 